Hi, this is Anna from Flexicon and I want to give you a quick tour of what is new in Disco 1.9. Disco 1.9 is a productivity release that will make your daily work with Disco even easier than it is right now. The power of process mining and of Disco in particular is the quick way uh, in which you can take different views on your data. You can explore unknown and complex processes very quickly by starting from a data set that you don't fully understand and by taking different views on it until you get the full picture. With this new version of Disco, you will get there even faster. Let's take a look. An important aspect of process mining is that you are not only discovering your process map based on the actual data to get an objective picture of how the process really looks like, but that for any problem that you find, any issue, you can always go back to look at some concrete examples. For example, here you see this is case 1417 in this purchasing process. So this is purchase order 1417 and we see exactly the steps, these five steps have been followed, those people were involved. Those are the timestamps and other attributes around it. So this helps to really get an understanding of the context um, where things have happened and allows you to do a root cause analysis and take action uh, for the problems that you find. So one typical example in this exploration could be to look at some extreme cases in the case overview statistics here. For example, I could sort this table based on duration and then I can see, well, there's one case that is taking 108 days and seven hours in total throughput time. So now I would like to look at this particular case and with Disco 1.9 I can now simply click on the case I'm interested in and I can say show case details and I'm immediately taken to that particular case and I can inspect um, the history and the steps that were performed to get some understanding of what was happening there. And I can do this in many different ways. I can also sort based on the number of events and, for example, look at the case where the most steps were happening. 44 steps happened in this particular case. So what was happening here? And take a look. Another addition is that you can now explicitly filter for particular case IDs that you're interested in. And in the filters, typically you're looking for certain process characteristics. For example, I might use the performance filter to focus on the very long running cases or the ones um, that take um, yeah, many, many steps in the process to be completed. But now what you can also do is that you can simply add an attribute filter and then below the other attributes that you have import with your data you can also um, find a new entry there which is called case id so if you go there um, you can select just a few cases that you're interested in so you can be very specific and filter um, in in a specific way for those cases that you're interested in one of the most popular tools um, in a process mining analysis is the variant analysis. So in the cases view in Disco, you get an overview about all the variants that there are. You see how many variants there are, 98 in this particular process, and you have a list of those different variants and you can look at the most frequent scenarios in your process, for example. We can see that variant one, for example, is covering 88 cases. So this variant uh, which is one sequence of steps through the process from the very beginning to the very end. Um, that's one scenario that the process can go through. And we can see that there are 88 cases that follow exactly the same scenario and fall into that variant. And it's covering 14% um, from our whole uh, data set. So what you have here now is in variant one, <clears throat> you can see that there are 88 cases and you can explore and look at some example cases that all have the same sequence of steps. They will follow the same variant path, but they have different people involved, different timestamps, different uh, other different attributes. So what you can do is you can explore those different variants and look at the top five, top 10 variants, for example, to see what are the typical scenarios in my process. And uh, by doing that, you can already identify um, a lot of deviations from your ideal process where you realize that maybe one of the most frequent variants is not actually a variant that you that you want like this one where um, in this purchase order process the, the the order process was stopped quite early which is an indication that there is some waste going on here because those cases shouldn't have been started in the first place and you can think of ways to prevent those cases from happening and making the process more more efficient 
Now, um, you also have the variant statistics, um, which are here next to the cases tab. Um, so you can look at the mean and median durations for those variants, the number of steps that there are. And um, from that table, you can now also directly jump towards the the concrete examples for further exploration. For example, if I'm interested in variant 7 and I want to see um, some examples of that, I can now simply click on the line of variant 7 and I can say show variant details and I'm taken directly to variant 7. And in exactly the same way as we've shown before with the case analysis, you can now also directly filter for variants. Now you could already filter for variants in a previous version of Disco through the variation filter. Let's say for example we want to look at the process map just for the top five variants and we want to see how that main flow of the process looks like. We could simply add a filter and in this case choose the variation filter and we can focus the analysis on the mainstream behavior of those top five variants. Now if we do that <coughs> then we only keep those top five variants in the filter data set and our process map looks much simpler than it was looking before. But um, what, you, um, what you realize is that once you start looking at those variants, and I'll remove the filter again here, is that often you want to be more specific and you actually identify the scenarios that are good or bad and that are showing the intended process behavior and the ones that are not so ideal. So it can happen that you say, well, variant one is, um, is a good variant that I'm expecting variant two, but variant three, um, that's not reflecting my, um, my intended process, but variant four and five are. So I want to show um, and look at the process based on variant one, two, and four and five, but not include variant three. So that wasn't possible in the previous version of Disco, but you can do that now by adding an explicit attribute um, filter <coughs> where you filter for the for the variant itself. So I can also here choose um, the new variant entry, which is at the very bottom below all the other attributes. And then I get a list of the variants and I can, for example, explicitly select those four variants that I want and not include the variant three, which I don't want to see. One of the great sources of productivity in Disco are the filter shortcuts. Now you have already um, a number of filter shortcuts, especially from the process map. For example, if I look at this customer service refund process here, then I can see that some of those have been cancelled and maybe those where the cancellation was involved, that's a different scenario for me. I want to focus in on that and I want to further analyze it. So all I have to do is I can click on this activity and I can say filter this activity, which automatically pre-configures a filter in the right settings. And I, all I have to do is to apply the filter. Um, I can also make a copy to keep this um, as a bookmark for further analysis. So once I've done that, I have now focused in on all the cases where a cancellation occurs and I can see in much more detail what's happening before and what's perhaps leading to that cancellation. And in the same way, you have shortcuts for partic particular path in the process. For example, you can click on this arrow uh, if you want to see, you know, this one particular case that directly went from order created to shipment um, and then you have the same shortcut here um, and also you can do it based on those start points so um, we can click on any of those dashed lines to add a, a start um, or end point filter to focus in on all cases that start there but um, with the new version of Disco you get a new uh, possibilities to at filter shortcuts, which makes your daily work even more efficient. And one scenario to explain uh, what is new is to go to the statistics tab and to look at some of those channels that these um, customer service refunds can come through. So we have three different channels. Um, one of them is the internet, when customers fill in a form um, themselves and then this starts the refund process people can call in through the call center or they can go back to the dealer the shop where they bought that product that they want to return now um, one thing you want to do in such a scenario is you want to look at the processes for those different um, channels because they will be different and look quite yeah different will have different kpis attached to it and so forth so for example if we wanted to filter the process for the internet channel, what we had to do before is we 
head to edit filter go to the attribute filter choose the right channel uh, the right attribute which is the channel attribute and then we could say okay we want to focus on the internet channel and we could um, apply the filter and then we get our process just based now on those orders that came in through the internet channel but with the new version of disco this becomes much easier so if we go back um, to where we started and we say we want to focus on the internet channel uh, we can simply right click right here from the statistics and then we can say filter for internet so that's the the channel value you want to filter for and then you're taken right to the attribute filter with the right attribute selected the right configuration settings so all you have to do is to uh, apply the filter and you are there so that's um, that's a great way um, to further improve your workflow and to quickly focus in on, on other aspects um, on all the different aspects of the process that you want to look at and the same shortcuts have been added for the new case and variant filter. So if I go to the statistics and this overview table for the cases, I can now simply click on a case and say filter for case 300, for example. So I'm immediately taking to a pre-configured case ID filter, which I've just shown you before, which we have new newly added with Disco 1.9. And with variants, it's the same. So we have now this explicit variant filter and I can simply click on any particular variant that I'm interested in and I can directly jump to pre-configured filter that way. There is even a faster way to explore certain example cases than filter shortcuts, which is searching. Disco features a full text live search through the search window here in the upper right corner. So if I'm interested in seeing some cases where something, for example, some payment activity happens, I can start typing and while I'm typing, Disco is updating the search and just looking through the whole data set and showing you all the cases that match and it's highlighting um, the areas where it either found a matching attribute or a matching activity name or a matching person whatever you're looking for so this is a great way to just zoom in on some examples and look at the context what's happening before and after something specific that you're interested in now with disco 1.9 you get a new a search sort uh, search shortcut as well where if you go to the statistics um, tab you have all the different statistics for the different attributes that you've imported and let's say for example we are looking at the activity statistics and we see well this particular activity it takes relatively long compared to the others on average um, but it doesn't occur very frequently so we we are curious and we just want to see some examples of that now previously what you had to do is you would have to click on the activity say copy um, the, the content of the cell go to the cases tab uh, and then there paste the the search value um, that you want to look for now with disco 1.9 this is much easier because you have the search shortcut you simply click on the activity that you're interested in and then you can say search and you're directly going there and disco fills in um, the search term goes to the cases tab shows you the result and this works for any attribute any other attribute value not just activities and you can also use it um, in, a, in an interactive way so while you're exploring this you might see other things that are interesting you see some other dispute activities or let's say i'm interested in this settling activity so i can simply click on here and say search and now the search is adapting and i'm looking at certain examples and then i'm searching for something else so this is a very efficient way to simply explore the process based on some keywords based on some specific activities or attributes and to look at examples um, to understand the context where this is happening when you complete your analysis you often want to export the results to put them in a report or to prepare a presentation that summarizes your findings and you can already export all the results that you get with Disco. For example, you can export the process map um, through the process map exports in different formats, for example, as a, as a PDF a vector, a graphic, or you can export all the statistics. For example, I can export the charts by right-clicking on the image. And I can export uh, any table um, from the statistics screen by right-clicking on it and saying exporting to CSV. Now, um, because people really like the variant analysis and um, they are such a powerful tool to look at the different scenarios, um, 
there are more ways that you can now export the variance analysis compared to before. So previously you could export the variance statistics that you're looking at here. And uh, if I do that, then I can export this table, I can save it on the desktop, and it's exported as a CSV file that you can, for example, open in Excel um, and show to other people. And then what you see is that you get um, all the variant information, but also actually all the steps um, that are occurring. Um, so you can share this um, with your colleagues and uh, you can show them which of the variants, which of the scenarios are good and bad and which ones are, are occurring, um, how frequently and how long they take. In addition to exporting the analysis results, you sometimes also want to export the raw data to do further analysis in other tools like statistics tools or data mining tools. And you can now export the variant information with DISCO 1.9 along with the raw data in two different ways. First of all, in the case statistics, you have the variant information included here with this additional column. So if you export your case statistics, you get the case summary information uh, in the exported CSV file along with the variant correlation. The second place where you can export the variant information with the raw data is through the export of the data set. So any data set can be exported through the event log export um, here, and then you can export it as a CSV file. And in this export, you export the full data set with all the events and activities that are happening and also all the attributes. Um, and this is the filtered event log. So if you have applied a filter in your analysis, um, the the filter outcome, the filtered event log will be exported. And now if you export your data as a CSV file, the variant information will be included in the exported CSV file as well. One of the biggest powers of DISCO comes from the possibility to quickly zoom into all kinds of aspects of your process. And you typically do this through the use of filters. Now, by working from the raw data, directly from the raw data, DISCO's filtering capabilities extend way beyond simple drill downs that you see in BI tools based on prepared queries and aggregated data cubes. And one of those filters that's quite powerful is the, the endpoints filter if you use it in trim mode. And I want to show you based on an example how this works. So let's take a look at this refund process from an electronics manufacturing company. Let's say we are analyzing this process from a customer perspective. Customer requests a refund and they want to get their money back. So if we look at the process and maybe we are analyzing the delays in the process, how long things take, then we see that towards the end of the process, there's quite some something going on here. The product is being prepared for scrapping, it's being scrapped, and there's quite some delays that are accumulating here, like 14 days on average. But if you look at the customer uh, perspective, the customer's point of view, then you see that um, the activities where they receive their money back, for example, the payment issued um, is one of those activities. This is um, the activity that matters to them. So for them, the process is completed at that point in time. Now, if we want to analyze the process from this customer's point of view, we can use the trim filter um, here. So we add an endpoints filter, we go to the trim mode, and then we select these end activities that uh, we want to focus on. And we can take a different perspective by doing that. There are three different activities here that indicate a payment to the customer. Payment issued, refund issued, and special refund issued. So we choose those three activities as our new endpoint. And then once we apply the filter, we can see that our process map has adapted. We see those endpoints um, are shown now at the act as the actual endpoints in our process. And everything that happened afterwards has been cut off uh, from the process. And this means that in our analysis, we can now focus on the process from the perspective um, that the matters to the customer, but also all these other statistics that we have, like the case duration, um, the variance, everything is now being analyzed until that point in time uh, when the customer has received their money back. With DISCO 1.9, the trim functionality in the endpoints filter has become even more powerful. Let me show you what is new based on another example. Um, 
let's look at this purchasing process where we have a lot of repetitions going on. So there are amendments that are being made, changes to existing requests, and we can see one amendment activity here on the left side and another one here on the right side. Now, there are even multiple amendments that are being made within a single case. For example, if we look at the maximum number of repetitions, we can see that there's up to 12 changes, up to 12 amendments that are being made to a single case. Now, let's say that we want to focus on the, the starting area of this process. So the beginning um, from create purchase requisition until the area where the amendments are being made. And we want to focus on that segment on the process to analyze it in more detail. Now, if we look at some of the example cases, we can search, for example, um, for these amendment activities that are taking place. So here you can see the highlighting of amend request for quotation and another one. And we see that um, this case, for example, has two amendment activities. And there are some that are having even more. For example, here you have one with three amendments that took place. Now, if you apply the trim filter, um, then you can um, ask yourself what the segment is that you want to focus on. In some situations, you want to focus on the shortest segment from the beginning. Um, so in this case, from create purchase requisition until the first amendment um, takes place. Uh, and in other situations, you want to include all of those amendments in the segmented process. So then you would like to cut off the process after the last amendment activity takes place. And exactly this kind of distinction can be made now with the new trim functionality. So let me show you how this works. We go to the endpoints filter and then we have two options. The first one is trim longest and the second one is trim first. So let's first trim the longest segment and we can, um, yeah, select these two amendment activities that we want to choose as our new endpoint in the trim filter. Now, if we keep the trim longest and let's make a copy to compare the effect that this has with the other option, um, then we can create um, and apply the filter and we can see that the process has been cut off after the amendment activity. And if we highlight the actual amendment step, then we can see um, that we have cut off the process after the last occurrence of each of those amendments. So we include all the phase with these changes that are taking place uh, in the segment that we're looking at. Now let's assume that we want to focus only on the first segment until the first amendment activity takes place. Then we can go back and we can say trim first and then we would get a different effect. If we compare now the result that we get, and again, let's highlight the particular activity that we have used to cut off the process, then we can see now all of those segments, they are cut off directly after the first amendment activity takes place. So depending on the meaning of your particular process and the segment that you want to focus on for more complex processes where actually multiple end activities have been selected, um, and where multiple occurrences of a particular end activity can occur, you have now a much more fine-grained way to determine the segment that you want to cut out of the process to focus on. Next to process improvement teams, also auditors increasingly use DISCO to analyze processes for their audits. Now, their focus is typically less on performance, like detecting bottlenecks or rework, like we just saw, but more on compliance questions, like the violation of segregation of duties or the missing of mandatory steps. For example, if we take this purchasing process and we scroll towards the end of the process, then we can see something is happening here that shouldn't that shouldn't be happening. So we see that there's an invoice being sent and then afterwards there's one step in the process which is called release suppliers invoice which should always take place. So this is a mandatory step in the process to prevent fraud.
However, what we can see is that there are 10 cases that are bypassing this mandatory step and they're going directly from send invoice to authorize suppliers invoice payment. This certainly isn't allowed and as an auditor, I now want to know which 10 cases are following this path. So what I can do uh, in my post mining analysis is I click on this arrow, I can say filter this path and then a pre-configured filter has been added through the shortcut. And now I can say missing mandatory step. And in the filtered result, I get the process map, but I also get a list of the cases where I can look at these 10 cases that have skipped that mandatory step that shouldn't have uh, been skipped. So once I have found such a result in my audit, as an auditor, now I also have to document my findings. And in principle, I can export all the results, but um, with Disco 1.9, this becomes even easier because there's a new export option, which is called Audit Report. So if you go to the Event Log Export, and then you can choose in which form you want to export your data, at the very end, you will find a new option, which is called Audit Report. Now, if I export, this audit report, then I will export a zip file, um, which includes um, several parts um, of information. I'll show you what's in the zip file by first unzipping it and then looking inside. And then we can see, first of all, uh, you have the recipe. So this is the actual filter combination um, that was used to perform the analysis. And that's machine readable and you can use it to rerun the analysis, but um, also for other people who could check and um, reproduce the results from your analysis. You also get the actual output of the filter. So this is the filtered data set um, with the data set that remained after applying this filter. And then in addition, you also now get a human readable filter report. So if I double click this, then you can see that um, there's a report which includes information about the amount of data that was in the data set um, before filtering and then which filter was applied with the exact configuration and then the outcome of the filter. So what you can do now as an auditor is that you can include the whole zip file um, for each of the analysis that you are performing and you can just append it at, um, to your audit report uh, to document your findings. Another improvement that we have made specifically for auditors is that auditors often also need to document results for compliance rules that were not violated. So for example, let's go back to the purchasing process from before. And then we can see that there are these two activities, send invoice and release suppliers invoice. Now we know already that this particular activity is mandatory and that it's not allowed to skip it. But in fact, there is an additional rule that says that send invoice and release suppliers invoice should not be performed by the same person. So the four eyes principle should apply. And it's also called a segregation of duty rule. Now, with process mining, we can check such a segregation of duty rule very easily. In this case, we can simply use the, the shortcut here to directly get to a follower filter. But we can um, yeah, configure any combination of activities that we want to check such a rule for. And then below um, these two activities, uh, we can um, include another dimension. And in this case, uh, this the second dimension that we would include is the person performing that particular step. And if a segregation of duty rule holds and is followed, then different people should perform um, these two steps above. But if we want to find out whether this rule will, was um, violated at some point in time, then we will check whether it actually happens that um, the same person is performing um, these two activities for the same case. So in theory, this shouldn't uh, happen. And if the rule is violated, we will get all the violations in the filter result. So let's apply the filter and see what comes out. Well, in this case, we get an empty filter result. And in this particular situation, that's a good outcome because this means that our segregation of duty rule was in fact never violated. So always different people perform those steps for the same case.
Now, that's a good outcome, but at the same time, we still have to document the result for our audit report. And um, we could take a screenshot, we could export the recipe, but again, that's not ideal and a lot of manual work. So uh, with Disco 1.9, you can now directly save the audit report also from the empty filter result here. So you can simply press this button and you can export the audit result um, with the human readable filter summary. Um, the recipe and the, the outcome data set right from this dialog. The last two enhancements that I want to show you are to the process map. And the first one is that we created a thousand separator for all the, the frequency metrics. And this is something um, that is particularly important if you're analyzing high volume processes. This goes is highly optimized to analyze large data sets really quickly. And you can have many, many millions of records in your data that you are importing and analyzing with Disco. Now, if you import such a large data set with uh, lots of millions of cases and, uh, and activities, then it quite quickly becomes um, a little bit difficult to count the number of zeros or the, um, basically to understand what kind of number you're looking at. So this is a rather small data set with just 1,000 uh, cases here, but you can see the 1,000 separator um, being inserted here in the frequency metric. Now, the second enhancement um, is particularly useful for you if you are rerunning analysis um, frequently. For example, let's say you have a consulting project uh, for a particular customer and then certain improvements are being made based on the recommendations that you have given. Then often you want to rerun the analysis sometime later and to compare um, the outcomes of the improved process and to see how effective those changes really were. And when you make those comparisons, you get the new data and you would like to rerun the analysis as closely as possible. You can use the, the recipes um, to re-establish the, the filter settings of before. Um, and then also when you look at the process map, you often want to look at the same level of detail again. So for example, if in the previous analysis, you had looked at the process at 20% detail level for the path, then um, rerunning the analysis, you're trying to get it back to the same percentage. And that's not always exactly possible because maybe you don't get it exactly to 20%, but it uh, goes to 19.9 .9 or 20.1. But also um, you want to do it in a more deliberate uh, manner. So now with Disco 1.9, you can simply click on the percentage and you can exactly uh, input the percentage that you want um, for the level of detail of the activities and the path sliders. This concludes our tour of what is new in Disco 1.9. We hope you like it and we certainly think you will be even more productive working with Disco on a daily basis with this new version. If you're using Disco uh, with an internet connection, then the new software update will be automatically downloaded and installed the next time that you start Disco. If you're working in an offline environment, you can uh, manually download and install the new version from our website. Thanks for watching.